Hello, Few Candy here, and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo. And we're just enjoying the sloths in their brand new habitat here. I absolutely love these guys. <laughs> this little one, like, oh, two of them, in fact, actually just chilling out on the chair here. Literally adorable. <laughs> I absolutely love them and how this habitat turned out. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I have just come in and made a couple of changes. So we're getting lots of warnings and complaints that we didn't have any ATMs. So I've just stuck this in somewhat temporarily because <laughs> they're massively blocking our key path here, which is going to lead up to a grand plaza all the way at the end over here eventually. Uh, so we will be moving that. I've added in another little one over here behind the toilets and the information booth by the lemurs, which is a bit more of a suitable place, a little bit out of the way. Just with some very basic wood panels around it and some plaster panel pieces on the ceiling there, which <laughs> produces a little ADM shelter. It's a little bit odd, but I wanted it to be a skinny, thin building. So using those panel pieces for these different uh, textures, I think worked a bit better than using big full on walls. And the other little change I have just made off camera is I have created another toilet block just over here. So all of this needs detailing, which we will come on to. Again, just hiding the toilets away. So trying to make a bit more of an interesting building pattern here. So I've got the toilet block in, bought it out an extra two using again the panel pieces there. Uh, yeah, just to create more of an interesting shape. So I think that fits in quite nicely. Again, just using the building themes that we've used throughout the zoo so far. So the plan for today is to come on and talk about walkthrough habitats. We've done walkthrough exhibits last time, so we're going to talk about walkthrough habitats this time, which was a request by my Patreon, David Schott. Thank you so much for that. So we're going to be building out a small clawed otter habitat going down into our aquatic deep sea cave area <laughs> down here as well with a nice walkthrough through it. But there are a few things that we do need to address before that. So we're firstly going to look at this little staff area because it needs some TLC, I think, a little bit more than TLC, frankly, here. So we need to put in a larger staff room because it's going to accommodate staff from obviously the penguins, also the sloths, but also the sea otters back here too. So we've got kind of three different things. I mean, the sloths will be joined together with the snake exhibit as well there. So we've got three different elements, four different elements, in fact, that will need servicing by staff in this area. So important we make this a little bit larger. And then the second thing I do want to do before we come onto the habitat is create another food and drinks court area because we can tell citizens want this. If we just go through our zoo, we click on random guests. A lot of them are either hungry or thirsty. OK, I'm going to now click on the load of guests that actually aren't <laughs> hungry or thirsty. But in general, they are. You can also see this if you come to guests here. Our hunger and thirst rating is not great. So we definitely want to offer some more food and drinks areas. At the moment, the only ones we've got, so we've still actually got some vending machines right down the start by the Nile monitors, but they will eventually be gotten rid of along with the Nile monitor habitat, which will be moved to our big reptile house, which will sit up by the plaza. That's the longer term plan. But we do have, of course, our original food and drinks court area over here, uh, which is incredibly busy. But anyone actually sort of in the zoo now, has nowhere else to go. So I'd like to give them a little rest stop just this side of the sloths and then the sea otter habitat will be situated behind that. So we'll be able to get underwater viewing and also the walkthrough which will join up to the other side of the underwater viewing area there too. So that's the overall plan today. So there is a lot of building involved. So let's just start again with a little bit of staff management here. I had a question asking how do you know when you need more staff? And ultimately, the thing to look out for is this workload warning here. So on our vendors, we've got quite a lot. So what we could do, and quite a few of them are tired, so now is probably a good time to hire another one. So we could hire ourselves another vendor, which will kind of relieve the pressure on them a little bit. And let's click on them and let's make sure that they are assigned to entrance shops. So we've now got two spare vendors, essentially. So we should have nine in here for that entrance shops work zone which means that when some vendor is tired, one of the other free vendors will take over from them. And there should be a kind of continual cycle of them going to the staff room and then coming back to work. The other thing we can do on this as well is train them. So some of these with high workload are actually the highest trained vendors, which is uh, interesting. But frankly, vendor salaries don't cost a lot and we are literally raking it in. Plus, I've still got this warning that guests think tickets are underpriced. I've kind of been ignoring it because we've got enough money. 
But what we could do here is train up all of our staff again. So let's just go ahead and train all of our vendors as well to try and relieve some of that pressure. You'll see here as well, caretakers, he's a little bit overworked. We haven't trained them at all. So let's go ahead and train them. So I'll train them first and then see if that workload goes down. If it doesn't, then it might be time to add another caretaker in there too. We're onto the staff area and the first thing I wanted to do was flatten out more of this land. So we just used the level terrain function to do that. And then I came kind of underground around where the staff path dips down and used the pull function to pull the landscape out so that we didn't have kind of big caves and crevices underneath the ground there because we want the habitats to sit around them nicely. And then in terms of this area, what I wanted to do is just create a very basic like breeze block looking area for the staff. Um, I decided to separate out the electricity and the water into a separate unit so that we could just put walls around that at a slightly lower height with the controls sticking through the wall like we did inside of the Lima habitat. So I'm not going to say too much about this build really. It was just putting in a lot of wall pieces around this area. I think one thing I did do to make it a little bit more interesting was add a flat roof glass awning around the edge, which just uh, I think created a little bit more interest than just doing this big blocky square building. One other thing to note is where I have a three by three block like this, I was left with one roof piece in the middle. So you will see I put a flat glass roof piece into the middle because if you try and put a, a pointy bit there, it, it looks a bit odd, I think. So that's often the best way to deal with that when you're using roof pieces in this formation. very simple very basic little staff area there and I do like how this is separated I might try and smooth out the land a little bit further because this, <laughs> this slope is dodgy as anything right now so if we can get that a little bit smoother maybe add steps in going down I will do that in the detail in time lapse later on so coming on to our food court area before we start doing the habitat because that's going to sit kind of behind this area what I'd like for this is actually a raised platform area so I'm actually going to go for a path width of four for this because I want this to be quite a uniform grid that we can build around. So what I'm going to do is just bring this out straight for now by two sections like that. And then we're going to go into settings here and we are going to change the elevated length. So we'll tick that and we're going to make it just two meters here. So now when I click U to elevate it and I'm going to click it twice so it goes into stairs. We're just getting a nice small staircase up just by an elevated level of two. So it's not super high off the ground. And then if we press J twice to go back to flat, then we'll get onto a nice level here. And let's just click two of those because what I do want to do is then if we go back into settings here, we're going to click align to grid and because we've got two of these nicely next to each other, we can get the grid from this. We'll say square edges for this too. And then we're going to create quite a large open plaza area from which we can design our food court around and then what I would like here is I'd actually like some stairs up to the top so I'm going to go back to elevated length here I'm going to unclick that so it would just be on a default of four and we're going to click up twice 
Now we need to actually deselect the grid in order to do this. So this is going to be tricky to get this in, but I want it right on this corner. So you can see it's kind of snapping in there. We just click once with our mouse, then we can go back to you and we can create stairs up. I'm going to have a steep staircase up and then we'll click J to go back down. We're going to come out straight across like that again. And then we're going to create another grid. So this is going to be almost like a balcony essentially over the top of the lower food court area. So we're just going to bring it around like this and I'll show you how we can get the food and drink stands in in just a second as well. So then if we go into facilities, let's go to guest facilities and let's choose a food store. Now I have <laughs> been avidly researching some of these. So we've got almost all, I think we've got all of the food stalls and almost all of the drinks now available to us. So we can choose some different ones. So let's go for, let's go for a pizza pan up here. And what we want to do is firstly, we want to rotate this so it's nicely in line with our grid. You can see it's not really snapping in. So we're just going to have to go free form and try and line this up as best we can. But if you use the yellow guides, that will help you quite a bit. And then if we press shift, what we're going to do is try it and get it. I'm going to press Z a couple of times just to spin it around. So it's facing this way, actually. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and get it in line with our path here. So we can see what height it's at. You can see that's dipping down a little bit. So let's just bring it up a little touch. And that looks quite good to me. This is how we can get food and drink stools onto raised paths. Now that looks pretty straight. I'm quite happy with that actually. So let's just drop that in there. Then aligning to the same grid, we can then bring on a drink stool. So let's go for, let's go for pip shop water up here. And we'll just turn that around. We'll have that facing this way. And we can design a really nice building around all of this too. And then I think I do want a toilet up here. So let's just turn this around. We'll have this facing this way. And in actual fact, I think we'll bring this back a little bit. So let's just make that a grid size of two. And we'll bring it back to there. Uh, it does look like the path. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty good. This one is now not actually snapping into the path here, which is kind of annoying. So with the path, we can actually just connect it in there. She's been chucked out because I was going <laughs> to move it. But I decided not to. Yeah, if we can just grab the path, then we can connect that in. So that's connected in nicely. That one is. And so is the toilets. And it's all kind of on a grid basis. And then we can come back downstairs and let's add in some more. I think we'll have a gulpy slush for here. So that's again, let's just spin it around and make sure that it is nicely aligned to the height of our platform here. So yeah, like that will do pretty nicely. And then we can add it in. I think we'll go as close to the path as we can for this. I'm going to eyeball this into place right about there. We may need to move these around a little bit as well. And then I'm going to change the grid size to two meters just so we can have a slight gap in between these. And then we're going to bring in another food store. So we've got food and drink basically on each level. So let's have, let's have a Mexilente here as well. Um, and then I think because we've got enough room on the bottom here, let's go for another drink store. People seem to want drinks more than they do food. So I think we'll have a street box coffee for this. Why not? So let's just spin that round and add that in there. So that all seems to fit pretty well. I think what we do want to do is move these three over. So if we quit out of everything to move these three buildings all together, we click on this one, we can say select group here and that will select all of them. Then let's go to advanced move and rotate. They're all going to come out of their buildings like the one that did up above, but that's okay. And then we're just going to shift them over ever so slightly. Because what I want to try and make sure is we've got a gap of two meters either side of the grid. So that looks okay to me. And then we'll just get our path and we're going to delete out this one. <laughs> looks like we've completely screwed it, but it's okay. Okay. So we're going to put in our grid like that. We're going to deselect grid and then we're just going to snap in all of these buildings like so. But let's also remember with this that we can choose the option railing on elevated. And this way, if we come back into this, we can get some really nice railings along the edge here. So <laughs> I, I shouldn't have upgraded it all. Oh, let's undo that because we've just added a path to the edge there. I shouldn't have really upgraded this all before doing this, but there we go. <laughs> and this will give us some really nice railings along the edge of our pathways there. Now this, we can kind of build into the detailing around it. It's not super ideal, but it's okay. 
And then same goes for up here as well. Now what I do want as well is a little pathway down to get out to the walkthrough habitat. So the start of that is going to kind of happen right about here. So let's just pull out a path this way. If we click J a couple of times, that will send us down to the ground with some nice steps. And then we can connect the pathway up. I think we will connect into the side of the sloth one here. We need to move some of those stones, but that's OK. Then we're going to go out using Z. We're going to turn off angle snap for this, and then we can use Z to get a really nice smooth connection out this way. And then this will bring them to the edge of the habitat here, which I will come on to in just a second. But before we do that, we're going to build a building around this because it obviously looks incredibly strange right now. And with this, we have got path supports under here. But what I'm going to do is use my own columns because, frankly, they look a little bit strange. So if we go back into options here, there is also the option to remove path supports. So let's go ahead and do that. And what you will see if we go down these stairs as well is that those path supports are no more. So it's all floating <laughs> essentially up there. I don't mind them on these bottom bits. That's OK, but that top section, we definitely don't want them. OK, so moving on to the build, and I did actually decide to add a little extension onto the back of the main kind of guest area here. And if you align to grid and use square edges, add a piece onto the end and then delete it, the piece that you've already placed will have a square edge. So that's one trick with this. But the main reason for that extension was to have a guest viewing area over the otter habitat so that guests like who didn't want to do the walkthrough necessarily could come there and see the otters or just have a little quick view while they're eating their lunch. And then in terms of this building, what I really wanted was like a dark wall with bright, colourful patterns on it, which you will see further down in this time lapse. But I'm kind of not too sure if the dark wall really worked in the end. You can let me know what you think in the comments, but it was a bit of an interesting building design. But again, the techniques exactly as we have done before. So using the main four by four wall pieces, the little shop fronts around the shops, uh, arches around the toilets, and then filling in the two meter gaps with just the two meter wall panel pieces. Now to get rid of a lot of the railings around the paths, I did add in extra wall pieces, which is adding the bright, colorful element that you will see again further into this time lapse. But for instance, around the toilets, I also added in a double wall just to get rid of the extra railings there because that just covered it up really nicely. But again, there's not too much to say about this build. It's all the same building techniques that we have covered previously in the series. So I will just let you enjoy the rest of this time lapse.
there we go that is how you can do your double level guest areas and yeah we have got guests going up to both levels so it's, it's not like they choose to use the bottom level first they do just go to where they want so yeah pleased with how that's come out and i have also just stuck a little electricity box actually in just down the back here there's a staff path hidden underneath this flooring that i've put in here so you can't see that but staff can access it and yeah i think with the little fake staff door and a few windows it makes it feel a little bit more realistic there even though the staff aren't going to use that, they're just going to hop straight over their counters <laughs> into where they need to go. And then just down here, I have done a touch of detailing in front of this staff area. So just a few rocks and foliage and things in here. Um, there's still a bit more to do down this side. But I have also managed to fix the path here. So we've now got steps going down there. Again, we need detailing down it, but it's uh, much more appropriate versus what it was, I think. <laughs> the wonky uh stairs going up there so yeah quite like this little area now for a little staff area i think it's uh sitting quite nicely and nicely hidden away behind these rocks and foliage in between the guest path area into the sloth house and there and do remember with your staff buildings you have got that area of negative effect but this is reasonably close but with all of this detailing around it so the building pieces and the trees and the rocks and things like that that minimizes the area of negative effect so there's actually no bad effect on the guests from having that right there okay so coming on to our habitat now you will see i've done a bit of terraforming here so i have come in and sorted out this path we've done the same technique that we did before which is why i haven't shown you so we've used terrain stamp with the x function just to slope it nice and gently up this hill there and i've done two little viewing windows so this is going to be our otter habitat over here and then we will come on to the seals this side another time but for now, we're just focusing on this side. So I've split the main path off into two little viewing areas here. And again, we'll need to do some detailing around this, adding some education signs and benches, maybe a couple of vending machines even down here, because we do have the staff path access in the cave <laughs> all the way down here, hidden away there. Again, we might do something more with this, maybe add in a door so that people can't see that path area. And do you know what? We actually need to get rid of this long grass here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll just add in some rough rock texture there to get rid of that. Um, but yeah, it's feeling quite nice. So I think they'll come through the cave and they'll come out into an open sky area with two big glass viewing platforms for the seals and the otters either side. That is the plan. But let's have a little look at our Asian small clawed otters. So this is what we are going to put in. And they are vulnerable, so they will be relatively attractive for guests. Uh, native to Central and Southeast Asia as well. So we could do some Asian style detailing within this. We've got the three biomes that we can use here. And of course, we also want to take note of the fact they only need a grade two boundary, which is less than one metre. So it doesn't need to be particularly tall for this. And then in species data, you can see we can have up to 16. So it could be 15 males, 15 females. There's no like single male group with this particular animal. So I think what we'll do is we'll have probably seven males and seven females to start off with. And the best thing about this is this guest can enter habitat, yes. So that means we can do a walkthrough habitat where the guests can go in and walk around the otters and around the otter habitat because their relationship is, is fine with humans. Um, so that's going to be really fun. So that's what we're going to explore today. But let's just check. So if we had 16 adults in there and let's say every, every mating event, they have one to three offspring. So let's say we have 16 adults and let's say... I don't know if all, if all of them become really good. Let's say there's 14 kids in there as well. This is the size that we'll need. So we'll need 870 of land plus 348 of water and 232 of deep water requirements. So we'll want to make sure that we've got that in here. So of course, first thing to do is add in our boundaries so that we can check the habitat size. And to be frank, I think this is going to be absolutely massive because what we're going to do is extend it sort of down this way so that guests can walk in and around the edge of it with the little bridge over the river here. 
and this river as well I've kind of pushed it down because what I do want is it flowing into the lake which is going to sit here so I have a nice pedestrian bridge going over at this side and then we've of course I've left this viewing platform so they can see the otters around them there too so let's go into our barriers so we only need grade two so we're just going to go for the wooden logs for this I'm going to draw it in with this and then of course we'll probably change it up to the null barrier and put in some detailing with it as well but this is what we'll use for the basis of it for now so I am going to use four meter segments because I think that makes the most sense. So we'll just pop in the start of it there, which is where the guests ultimately are going to walk in. And then we're just going to build it all the way around the area that we want. Now, of course, with this section, I'm going to click away and I'm going to do a glass barrier. Now, there's a few options that we haven't explored with this as well, is you can have a flat top, an edgeable bottom or an undulating barrier. So if you've got a habitat which is kind of up a hill, you probably want to go for the undulating barrier so that the height, the height of the barrier will change as you go round. If you go for flat top, then it will keep the top flat. So if I come to add in a piece of barrier here, if we go across this waterfront, you'll see it's keeping the top of this completely flat and the bottom will edit depending on what the terrain is like. You could, of course, do it the other way. So you've got a flat top and an editable bottom. So at the moment with that, we can edit the top of the barrier and pull it down, but we can't edit the bottom. If you wanted to edit the bottom for whatever reason, you could use this one, <laughs> which is sometimes useful. And we'll probably use that later on in this series. But right now we just want to use the flat top. And then, like I said, undulating, you'll see the, the barrier goes down in height. So it keeps it at a 2.7 ish meters off the ground, but brings it down in height as the terrain changes. So yeah, useful little options there. Okay, so here, where we're going to have water flowing in from the habitat out of it, what we do want to do is we do a barrier that is not watertight. So here, what I'd like to do is actually the chain link barrier. So we're going to bring that across. Um, I am going to make it a little bit longer so that we can get all the way across here. So we'll just do it like that. And then what we can do, of course, is then just move this barrier so it's right up nice and close to the edge of this viewing platform here and then I'm actually going to draw in null barriers around this because this will essentially be our barrier this side. So going back to here we only need it to be actually more than one meter so at the moment this barrier is very high so let's select the entire thing and it's pretty much a flat top there's slight variations. What we'll do is just lower this down literally as far as we can go. We'll try and keep this glass flat along the front here and what I do want to do here as well is remove some of these so we're just going to click on some of those posts and get rid of them like that. So there's less posts for <laughs> the guests viewing in this area. In fact, I think we'll even get rid of that. So let's make this longer and then this will be able to snap into that barrier. Let's do exactly the same thing here. We've just got that one post in the middle, so it's not interrupting the flow of guests viewing. So we still need to have a keeper gate in here. So let's go ahead and add this down at this back side here, because what I will do is do a little house for the otters over this side. And then they have direct access into this staff area where there's the keeper hut and the staff room and everything they need. So I have now put in the water. It's definitely not perfect. It needs some smoothing around the edges, but it will do for now and we'll fix it later. So coming on to a walkthrough habitat. So in our barriers, what we do want, we obviously still have the keeper gate, which we will need, but we do then also have this guest gate. So what we'll do is place this in along the barrier here. We may need to move this path back just to get this in. And yeah, that now sits in a bit more nicely there. So we'll, yeah, let's add that in there. And then you can make a loop and come back and just have one guest gate. That's not a problem. But what I would like for this is actually them walking through the entire habitat. So we're going to bring out the exit essentially over here. And then what we want to do is connect that up via paths. And I think the best paths for these generally are the natural paths. Um, so, yeah, if I show you this, you can see there's literally like no marking. So if I click away from that, you can't see it at all. So that's one way that you can do it or if you choose you can do curb on ground path and then if we upgrade this what that gives us is markings which i think for a walkthrough habitat is probably better because at least then the guests can see where they're actually walking and there's different types of curbs so you could have this one with the barrier there um so that's yeah quite cute and you can have ones which are where the the path is marked with kind of different 
terrain, sands, etc. I think we will just do this one for now. And what we do want over here is <laughs> a bridge, but that is uh, quite long. So let's go back and see if we can make this a little bit nicer. I'm going to turn off curved slopes. We get this over nice and smooth. And we will also turn on angle snapping. We can get it nice and straight across. We'll just bring it down like that. And it doesn't look too bad. <laughs> it doesn't look too bad. I think we'll go for that. Let's turn off angle snapping again so we can get a nice smooth path down the side here. We'll bring it right out to the water's edge. They so can sort of follow that round and see the otters swimming in their natural habitat there. And we'll just simply connect it up around the edge here. And one key thing with the walkthrough habitats is sometimes the animals can get a little bit stressed, even though they're happy with the humans walking in there. So what you want to offer them is various different places where they can hide. So we've got the path over one side of it and there's enough land mass and water over here that will be further enough away from where the guests are that they won't get too stressed. So they've got places that they can go to kind of get away from the guests because these can become quite crowded sometimes. <laughs> Now, the other thing that we absolutely definitely want to be putting in here is if we come to facilities in bins, benches and security and the security tab, there are various different things. And we're going to go over guest curb barriers at some point later in the series. So do not worry about that. That stops the guests from walking places. You don't want them to walk. It's very, very useful indeed. But the key things we do want to be aware of are the security signs saying do not disturb and do not feed. <laughs> and that is absolutely definitely what we want in this habitat now these are not the nicest looking signs i will admit but they're really important like let's have both of these in at both entrances because this is the thing guests will walk both ways where we've got two entrances like this which isn't ideal i wish you could do a one-way path essentially for them but yeah let's put in a few of these at either entrance just to remind guests that there are animals in here and they need to behave themselves they need to be quiet and do not disturb and definitely don't feed the animals. And this can also be really useful in things like this prairie dog habitat because technically guests could throw food over this barrier. So you can have signs like this here uh, to stop them from doing that. So if you do get any warnings saying like guest food is in your habitat, then you probably want one of those signs. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase the otters. We can have seven males and seven females and then get started on designing out their habitat here. So once I had got my otters in, which did take an awful long time to buy because I kept having to wait for half decent ones and then they all wanted conservation credits, which I have virtually none of. So we're going to need to breed those penguins and get some conservation credits in a little bit quicker, I think, for better animals. But yeah, the first thing I did after that was go through and do all the terrain requirements. So in particular, getting rid of a lot of the long grass and adding a bit more short grass to it but also mixing in the heavy soil with the light soil. Again, the tip here being lower that intensity, do small brush strokes and, and mix it all in together so it kind of blends a little bit more naturally than if you do heavy brush strokes and, and large areas. My main focus for this was to kind of get the heavy soil look around the water's edge where I'm kind of thinking the otters spend a lot of time eating, playing, etc. and blend in some of the lighter soil around that to mix in up to the grass textures. And you would have seen, I've done a little bit of terraforming here as well. So I've just smoothed out some of the banks. I actually made the habitat a little bit smaller as well, because as soon as I got the otters in, I realised how much I had absolutely massively overkilled the entire area, as I usually do. So I made it a little bit smaller, which I think really helped, because it's still a huge habitat versus what they actually need. And then here you'll see I'm starting to build out the shelter. Now this shelter, I actually decided to use some corrugated iron roof panel pieces and unfortunately the otters don't see this as the hard shelter that they need although they're absolutely fine because they have got the bedding as well and they do sleep in it that's not a problem with them but for some reason because i haven't used actual roof pieces here it doesn't recognize it as hard shelter so it's pretty frustrating but i really like how this little shack has turned out just piecing together various different wood panel pieces
it came to the foliage, one absolutely beautiful thing about these animals is that they don't really have a coverage preference. So it's kind of 99% foliage coverage that you're allowed within franchise mode within their habitat. So you can just go absolutely nuts with plants <laughs> and it's great. Now with the edges, I did decide to actually leave in the wooden barrier and kind of cover it up a little bit with reeds and bamboos and various different bushes and trees around parts of the edges, but actually leave a lot of it exposed because I didn't really mind how it looked. And I think when we use the wooden one as well, it feels quite natural and it blends in quite well to the environment. So you'll see that at the end. But yeah, with foliage, I do tend to like to put the bigger things in first, but then I spotted these little plants and I wanted to remember that I wanted to put in lots of long grass with flowers. So I, <laughs> I put a few of those in around the bottom of a big tree at the back of the habitat that you will see. And I use a lot of this throughout this habitat. A lot of the long grass and the flowers around the place because the otters can just run through all of it. <laughs> it doesn't restrict their movements and it makes it feel super duper natural. And you'll see as well with the foliage, I've, I've cut a lot of this out of the time lapse because it is just ultimately the same thing over and over again. And there were so, so, so many plants in this habitat. It just, it took a really, really long time to get them all in. But we have got lots and lots of water lilies and the water hyacinths on the water to make it feel very natural again indeed. And again, the otters just swim right through it. So it's not a problem from blocking them or blocking the guest view or anything like that. Um, we tried to use some bigger trees around the edge and a couple in the middle just to give them some privacy and some shade and make it like a nice walk through the habitat as well. So always thinking about what is the view from the path with these habitats, like what kind of view do the guests get? Um, so trying to make sure that they've got clear pathways through to different areas, but also the fact that the path will block views from certain angles as well is quite important so that guests don't congregate. And you will see later in this time lapse as well, I actually widened out the paths in the two bits either side of the bridge, where the main place where I think guests will hang out and stop to watch, just to give them a little bit more space. But yeah, pretty much the rest of this time lapse is foliage. So it was really about providing shady spaces for the animals, covering up some of the boundaries like we've mentioned, and just making it feel really nice and natural.
So before I do just show you the finished habitat, I do just want to point out one thing and that is we have named one of the otters Misa after one of my subscribers who has been watching since very, very early on in this journey. Who always comments and I know who absolutely loves otters. So <laughs> I hope you like having an otter named after you Misa. Thank you so much for your support. Unfortunately, it's not a sea otter, but it is an Asian small clawed otter that I kept calling sea otters throughout this episode. <laughs> So here we go, this is the finished habitat. Now there are little bits, well quite a lot of detailing to do around the edge, like definitely this underwater area, which we'll come on and do when we put in the seals. Now, just one thing to note, this board here is actually been vandalized. <laughs> so we may need some more security guards around the place, but one thing we can do is if we spot anything like that, we can replace it here. But the other way we can do it is going into the zoom menu and going to the crime menu here and you can see which objects have been vandalized and you can choose to replace all of them from here so we'll just do that and then magically it is fixed <laughs> but yes lots of detailing still to do around the outskirts of this habitat but the internal part is is definitely complete so the underwater area i yeah really like how this turned out i really tried to go for just patchy rocks mixed in with some of these vines and a little bit of greenery here and there, a few different plants mixed in. Um, but yeah, I'm quite pleased with how it's come out. And we do, of course, have the underwater fish feeder. So sometimes the otters do choose to dive. <laughs> Not at the moment, it would seem, disappointingly. But yeah, we come up here. Now I've connected this gate. Again, lots of detailing needed around here. But if we just come in from this side here, you can see what the habitat is like. Now, obviously, there'll be foliage, probably some extra staff buildings out on this platform, actually, as well. But that will kind of be covered up um, and then you'll see down probably across into the seal habitat over there. But we've used lots of the water hyacinths, as mentioned, lots of long grass and plants all the way around this. Important to also add in bins because your guests will drop litter as they go through the habitat, which is like honestly absurd to me. <laughs> but they do. I've also got this slight problem with flickering trees on my water. Not sure what that's about, but it's quite annoying. <laughs> so we'll see if we can get that fixed for next time. But yeah, lots of long grass and flowers around the place, which I really like. Clusters of bushes. The island in particular has turned out really nicely. And then here is where we've widened the path, just where the food is for the otters, the main food plate. So I think this adds a nice, yeah, bit of extra space for the guests because these Walkthrough habitats can get really overcrowded. So widening the path really helps quite a bit, I think, there. We've got loads of otters. They are the most adorable animals as well up close. They're just so, so cute. So, so cute. And you'll see they swim and crawl through all of the plants. Like It's just like incredible to watch. They're very, very, very cute indeed. I wish they did a little bit more diving, but they do do an awful lot of swimming like this. Oh, just absolutely glorious. And again, we've put in rocks in some of these shallower streams as well around the place because you can kind of see them through the water. I think it adds quite a nice effect to it. The playing in the bubbles. Now, I, of course, did do quite a lot of guest research as well. So I added in the mud pool once I've got that research down here, which I really, really like in this shady spot. And it actually means, if we zoom out a little bit, guests from this platform up here actually get a really nice view of that mud pool and across down into here although there'll be <laughs> a lot of guests in their way but we've tried to put some enrichment items down here and of course across there so there are things for guests to look at if they're up on this area here yeah the island offers quite a nice little bit of privacy i think for the otters there's lots of undergrowth that they can kind of sit in and hide away in and then this little back stream bit as well is very very private for them kind of going in between there and we have got an otter swimming i've just paused it because <laughs> my frame rate started going absolutely nuts when i went underground not ideal at all but yeah we have got them swimming so there are some nice views to be had from out here it's a very very large glass wall indeed but yeah, I think it, I think it works nicely. So yeah, really super duper pleased with how this habitat has turned out. So if you have enjoyed this episode, likes, comments and shares are really, really appreciated. And keep letting me know your ideas for the rest of the zoo. But that is going to be all from me for today. So thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you again next time. Bye bye. <laughs>